All right, welcome everybody to today's episode of Net DevOps Live. My name is Hank Preston and I will be your host. Joining us today is presenter Adrian Alusu. He is a member of the DevNet engineering and software development team and he will be going through how you can actually start building your own network features using NX SDK and some other tools available for Nexus platform. If you have any questions during today's session, be sure to use the Q&A panel. We'll be monitoring that and answering them throughout. And if you're looking for the webinar resources, slides, links to sample code, all of that, it's available up on NetDevOps Live under the webinar resources for today's session. And I'll drop a link to that in the chat panel in just a moment. With that, Adrian, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and share your screen and we'll dive right in. Cool. Thanks, thanks, Hank. Uh, thanks everybody for joining. 8 a.m. here on the West Coast, so uh, I appreciate it for the folks that are over here and all over the world, so thanks a bunch for joining. So, my name is Adrian Liesiu. I'm a DevNet engineer. I've been with the team now for almost five years, and um, I'm doing pretty much anything and everything in DevNet. Um, I love working with the team. Um, I've been doing events, working with Hank. It's always a pleasure, so hopefully... Um, I'll be coming back next season, season three, Hank. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this one goes. So today we're going to talk about building your own features on NXOS, right? So I'm sure at, a, at some point in your careers you've had, uh, you've questioned yourself, hey, there's a feature that's not there. There's a show command that I would like to be a bit different, that I would like to change, that I would like to have my own show command, right? And I'm not talking about uh, configuring aliases here. I'm configuring about something brand new, right? A feature, maybe even a protocol that's not there. Uh, maybe LLDP version three comes out, right? And you want to implement it as soon as possible because there's uh, a need for interacting with uh, another type of device. It's needed to have this protocol. So features, um, and show commands, configuration commands on access switches uh, up until fairly recently, they were limited to Cisco uh, Nexus engineers, software developers, QAs, right? It was all developed within Cisco, but that changed a while back and we've opened this up and you have now the option of developing your own features, your own configuration commands, your own show commands, whatever you want to do. We have made available an, uh, an SDK for this we call it Annex XDK, and we'll see during today's session how you can start using this to, to develop your own uh, features. And we'll have a nice use case for you and a challenge at the end. So we are gonna talk about Cisco Data Center Networks, first of all, quick introduction, just a couple of slides on what the, the Cisco Data Center switches and what's the offering from Cisco, what, what are the advantages and we're gonna jump into extending NXOS. So we're gonna have a quick look at Guest Shell, uh, Docker, which has been recently introduced, and then NX SDK. We're gonna go into the uh, what it is, how you can start using it, and we'll have a demo for you. So Cisco Data Center Networks, the Cisco Nexus family of switches, they can be run in different in several different modes here. You can run them part of an ACI fabric uh, being managed by an AP controller, or you can have them run as a programmable fabric with VXLAN, BGP, VPNs managed by a third party open source controller, or you can have them run in standalone mode. <clears throat> and this is what I'm gonna talk about today, um, offering you a modern uh, enhanced operating system based on Linux. So OpenNXOS provides uh, third-party Linux applications. Like I said, it's being rebuilt from scratch on top of Linux. So you get advantage um, and you get all the tools that have been developed throughout the years for Linux. You can run ifconfigs, tcp dumps, top nano, uh, vim, whatever you want, all RPMs that have been developed throughout the years for Linux operating systems and servers. You can now actually run them on your Nexus switches. Um, you can also develop your own. We uh, provide an open or programmable API. So uh, we have NX API CLI and NX API REST. 
Uh, we also have NetConf interfaces on the Nexus, which is RASConf, and you can also take advantage of the third-party DevOps automation tools. So if you want to, if you automate your infrastructure currently with Chef or Puppet and you use their agents, you can pretty much do the same thing now on your Nexus switches, or you can use Splunk agents, uh, SolStack, uh, you name it. Um, on the extending and XOS part, first we'll start and we'll talk about Guest Shell. So Guest Shell is an open Linux environment and is decoupled, is on the side, is a container based on CentOS 7 64-bit that runs separately than the actual um, operating system running the switch. So why we've done this is because we wanted to give you the option of running securely and safely your applications in a containerized environment. You can run the whatever features you want, your RPMs that I was telling you about, or develop your own RPMs, and you can run them on the operating system running the switch. Right, so you can do that, but then there's a bit of danger because if something happens, your application crashes, it affects the whole switch, right? So we came up with Guest Shell to give you a separate, um, kind of on the side, containerized um, environment for you to deploy your applications, to develop there, to have your Python scripts running, to have pretty much whatever you need. It's a Linux container that you can take advantage of and use uh, right out of the box. How it looks, um, so you have at the bottom here the kernel, the Linux kernel running the whole switch, and then you have your guest root file system with guest shell running on the side. You have your own uh, native Linux processes running in there. It has uh, its own bash instance, and you can see you can run your own RPMs in there. Um, all right, so that's a quick overview of guest shell. And now let's look at Docker. So Docker, you could have run, uh, securely run third-party applications prior to an XOS 9.21 on Guest Shell, like I was saying, but there were uh, a couple of limitations. So you can only have one Guest Shell instance at, uh, at this point. Um, the container Linux distribution is always sent to S7. Right, so CentOS based, so if you have a different distribution, it's not as easy to, to port it to, Nex to Nexus. And the setup of the apps in the guest shell must be done from a Nexus 9K, so that's another limitation that we, um, that it came apparent from, uh, from discussing with, uh, with our customers and partners. And reusing and distributing guest shell uh, images can be done with the import export feature. So once you define a guest shell instance on one of your Nexus switches as like your gold guest shell image, you can move it. It's an OVA file, so you can easily move it to your other uh, Nexus instances, but still there is no centralized container orchestration support with uh, guest shell. So that's why we came up with Docker. And Docker engine has been, um, made available on NXOS 9.21, starting with July 2018. So it's been now almost a year that has been out there and is available on all Nexus 9K models and also on Nexus 9 3K uh, models uh, with eight gigs of memory or more. And you get your stock uh, standard Docker engine with all the commands to support this. So you can do a Docker pool, you can point it to Docker Hub and get your Docker images from there or to your own instance of uh, Enterprise Docker. If you have your own Hub instance, uh, Docker pool, push, kill, info. So all Docker functionality is supported uh, on Nexus. So to give you a quick parallel between guest shell and docker engine with guest shell you can run only one container with docker engine you can run many um, you have access to the storage and network from both uh, guest shell and docker so you do get access to the front end panel that switches that the ports that are running on the switch so you actually get access to that even if it's read only. So for read write access, you need to go in bash shell in the actual uh, Linux running the switch. 
there you can shut down um, interfaces on the switch and bring them up and, and all of that. Um, Linux distribution type for guest shell is CentOS. For Docker engine, you can have any, right? Uh, container man manipulation, you have, um, you can interact with guest shell from the NXOS CLI with guest shell and then question mark, you can run commands, you can enable it, disable it, destroy, upgrade. So you have a bunch of options in there. And with Docker engine, it's your standard Linux Docker tool command set, Docker pull, Docker PS, Docker kill, Docker run, right? You have, uh, that's how you would interact with your Docker images and containers. Um, the definition of the container image must be done on an Access NK um, on with Docker engine can be done on any computer supporting Docker, right? So you can build your own images uh, very easily if you have Docker installed on your laptop. Um, there's no repository of existing container images for guest shell. And then of course there's Docker hub and container orchestration. There's none with guest shell and then there's Docker swarm or even Kubernetes. Uh, for Docker engine. So that's just a parallel between uh, what Docker offers compared to guest shell. And this is based on the feedback that we've gotten from our customers, from our partners. It's like, hey, guest shell is great, it's nice, but we like, we'd like a bit more uh, options. We'd like a bit more freedom to deploy our own containers. And that's why we came up with Docker. Uh, what apps are interesting to host on uh, Nexus 9K with Docker? You would have your monitoring agents. You could have uh, open source agents, Ganglia and Agios. You can monitor both standard Linux components. You can monitor your CPU, memory interface counters, as well as NXOS routes, buffers, packets in, out on an interface. Um, and you can also have custom agents, equal cost, multi-pedal balancing. We'll see an example of this in our NX SDK session. Um, PTP accuracy. Uh, we'll also have an example on the NX SDK, how you can build your own um, show PTP uh, command. You can have automation agents, like I was saying, Chef, Puppet, Solstack. You can have them deployed and running on your switches for monitoring purposes, configuration management. Uh, you could have intrusion detection, DNS flow agents to detect phishing activity um, in your traffic, uh, custom intrusion detection agents, and then of course, very easily automation configuration backup, uh, which is a very popular and easy to implement solution. Every time you save up your configuration on your Nexus switch, um, a copy of that configuration will be, will be actually one second. We'll be actually uh, saved in GitHub, Bitbucket, whatever Git repository you have out there. Uh, all right, so next, let's have a look at NX SDK. So NX SDK is a simple, flexible, and powerful set of APIs for custom Unbox application through which you gain access to the NXOS infrastructure. So apps that you develop with NX SDK are just regular Linux apps. So we'll see you'll package them in RPMs, which is your Red Hat packet management solution, right? That runs on CentOS 7 Red Hat uh, Linux operating system. So you build your code, um, you package it up in RPMs, and then you will install it on the Nexus switch. They run, they just use the, the NX SDK APIs, right, in the backend. And the apps that you develop run natively as NXOS features, just like Cisco developed features. Startup and management of the applications is handled by NXOS. You do have to make sure that if you have uh, to supervisor running in an HA, you have your RPM on both supervisor in the boot flash, because if you have it only on one of them and the supervisor switches over and you don't have it on the second one, then of course your application will not run. So there's a couple of things that you have to keep in mind. And XOS, once you install the feature and you have it on the boot flash on both supervisors handles that for you. So if you reboot the switch or anything like that, the switch uh, that your app will be still running when it comes back up. 
but you have to make sure you have it on both supervisors if you have a dual supervisor setup. So how it works, um, we have at the bottom here the actual switch. And within it, you have your NXOS infrastructure um, APIs running. You get access to a CLI manager, to a syslog manager, to your routing information base manager, uh, so forth, so on and so forth. And we'll see currently the status of this to what actually you get access and how it has evolved over the years. You also have access to the CLI. So if there's something that's not exposed by the API currently, you can still use the CLI, do the CLI command, get the information, parse it, whatever you want to do with it, and then use that information to build your own feature, right? So we'll see in our demo, we actually do a show interface command. We get that data in JSON format. We parse it, we extract the data that we want and implement that in our feature. So there is that option too, if you need it. And your applications will run on top as an XSDK applications. So what we've done with this uh, is that our developers within Cisco are using the same SDK now to develop new features. So you're pretty much on the same level with our internal Cisco developers, right? I was saying, uh, I was telling you, you have access to this. They're using the same exactly SDK to develop new features to come out with new versions of NXOS. So you can actually be an access developer in your own, at your own, in your own home or at work or uh, whatever you see this fit. Uh, let's have a look at how NXSDK has evolved through the years. So we started with NXOS 7.0 i6 in May, 2017. And initially we had Python and C++ support. So you could develop your applications either in Python or C++. Um, we started with the definition of custom CLI. So you could define your show commands, your config commands very easily. And these were handled by a callback function within your code that gets invoked when the CLI gets executed. So you have your show commands, user presses enter, um, then there's a callback function that handles that um, functionality of your command. Um, and you also could generate custom syslogs at that point. To gain access to the NXOS CLI, you would do, um, you would actually use your SDK here object. So once you import, we also have libraries for both C++, Python and our Go. So you would import that library, of course, that the SDK comes with, and then use the SDK object in there that has a lot of methods available and functions for you. So in this case, we get uh, CLI parser. We create a new instance of that, of a CLI parser. We save it in our CLI variable, and then we just add a new config command. In this case, we have a threshold command and um, that takes one parameter. So when you do threshold question mark, that will be your parameter here and it will show you threshold value in megabits per second, right? So fairly straightforward to add new config command. You just instantiate a new CLI parser from the SDK object from your library and then to that you add a new config uh, command. And lastly, you add your command handler callback for the custom CLI. So you have defined here your new command. Here you add it to your handler, your command handler when the user presses enter, that function gets triggered, your callback function. And this is how you actually uh, associate that callback function to your code. February 2018, with NXOS 70 i7. Uh, we also introduced routing information based APIs. So you could do route lookups, you, can, you could uh, get route events, you get notifications upon updates, route ads, route removes, next stop change, right? So you can subscribe to those events and get information about them and uh, do whatever you need to do, right? Change routing on your switch, uh, shut down the port, enable another port, it's really up to you. Uh, is very granular. You get access to the prefix, protocol, address family, VRF, all of that is available through the um, RIP APIs. 
also streaming telemetry. So more than just syslogs, streaming telemetry support was added back in February 2018. To get access to the NXOS RIB API, same thing, you would use a different method from your SDK object. In this case, instead of get CLI parser, you would get RIB manager, you would store it in your RIB manager uh, variable. And then to register a callback handler, that will be invoked when the route event happens. This is how you would do it. And to subscribe for route events, you would watch layer three routes for direct BGP, OSPF, EIGRP, whatever you need to be watching in, in your feature. So this was back in February 2018. Um, with the latest versions of uh, NXOS, starting with 9.2.1, you actually get full access to uh, the DME. So let's see what the DME is and what that means for you. So for the next switches, think of everything that you can do on a switch and all the features and all the statistics and power status and on a power supply on your switch, everything's an object, right, in the backend. So it's very similar if you're familiar with ACI. There's um, a new model that the switching uh, infrastructure from Cisco is going towards, and this is based on um, object models or model objects that um, um, are representing everything that you can do with the switch, right? So you get access, it's, it's practically a database that you get access to. It's a tree-like structure database, starts from top sys, and then you have uh, several layers on the first branch, you have BGP, OSPF, you have VLANs, you have EIGRP, you have interfaces, and then one level down, you go into more detail about BGP or instances of BGP for interfaces, you get down to um, specific interfaces, and then one level down, you get statistics, and every single thing yeah, in there is an object, right? And you get access to this through your uh, data management engine. That's your read-write interface to the object store. So if you wanna establish a new BGP neighborship, you would set the object for your BGP neighbor and uh, the AS number would be an object, your neighbor command would be an another object, right? Defining that. Uh, your neighbor no shut would be another object in which you actually bring up that, that neighbor. So everything is an object at the end of the day and it's stored in a database and you have access to it through the data management engine. Um, there's a documentation on developer.cisco.com on how that works. Uh, you can actually browse the object store and get familiar with it. So once you enable um, your web uh, your web server on, the, on your Nexus switch, you can go to the switch management IP slash bizoy.html and you get there a list and you can go um, one level deep. You can go and explore how the uh, data model is organized on your Nexus switch. So getting access to data management engine, your interface to everything on the switch with version 9.21 and NX SDK, uh, what that means is that now you actually get access to everything. There's no more limitations. Um, everything is available through NX SDK starting with uh, version 9.2.1. Uh, the version that I'm running here is 9.2.3 that I have running, we'll see in the demo. So everything is supported. Um, you still have the option of going to the CLI if you want an XOS infrastructure with all the APIs, but you also can go straight to the DME and interact with all the objects, read, write them, however you see fit and whatever the use case is for your feature. As use cases for NXSDK, I was telling you about equal cost multi-path imbalance monitoring, right? So we've had customers come to us <clears throat> and told us, hey, we'd like to have um, automatically detection of um, ECMP bundles, first of all. And in case one of the bundles, one of the ports in the bundle is used more or much more than the other ones, we'd like to maybe switch the hashing algorithm so that we can change the uh, equal cost multipath balancing to be different so that all ports are used equally or 
at least not one of them is at 90% and all the other ports are at three, uh, five, ten percent right? So we would like to spread our traffic in a more um, uniform manner on all our ports that are part of an ECMP bundle. So um, we've come up with uh, uh, an application for this, a feature that's running on a switch. The code for this is available in the examples folder on the NX SDK GitHub page, which is uh, a public repo. I'll show you at the end of the presentation when we go over additional resources. So when high load is detected um, and the hashing imbalance uh, is there, right? You could do a define a custom syslog or trigger a streaming telemetry event, notify, hey, or you can actually even change the hashing algorithm uh, if you want to do that. This is just one use case. Another use case would be storm control persistent protection. So also we've had customers that are using storm control. They're, uh, they're fairly happy with it, but it came a requirement of, hey, storm is detected on an interface. The interface is shut down right away. I would like maybe to wait a minute or two to see. And if after that period of time, the storm control, the storm traffic is still there, then yes, shut down the interface or I would like after half an hour to bring back the interface, right? So I would like to specify these two timers um, so that I can more easily uh, manage my storm control feature. So by default, that was not there, right? So the storm control, it shuts down the port right away and doesn't bring it back up unless you interact with it and you do a no storm control type of thing and you bring back the interface, you do a shut, no shut. Um, so we've come up with an application using the NX SDK for them. And you have the option of running storm.py question mark shut interval. It basically, it, you can mention the interval in seconds after which the interface, uh, it's actually shut down, right? So you could wait for 60 seconds, a couple of minutes, and then shut it down if it still persists. Or you also have the option of unshutting the interface after a specific interval. So it waits, you wait half an hour. Okay, let's bring it back up and see if uh, that traffic subsided or, or what's the status. So it's kind of automated way of bringing back your interface that's been uh, subjected to a storm uh, traffic. Again, something functionality that was not there, that customers requested it, we came up with it and we made it available to them uh, through the NX SDK examples folder. So you can uh, also start using this right away. Precision time protocol monitoring. So PTP is a fancier version of NTP. It's supposed to be uh, more precise, right? So there is no show PTP clock command out there. We came out with it and you have the option of implementing uh, PTP monitoring uh, with, or even PTP as a protocol, right? Uh, if it's not there, you have the option of actually implementing it yourself uh, with all the show commands that you need. Um, all right, so having said that, we're at the demo part. I will be using a um, Nexus 9000V. So let me connect to my instance. I have it running in my data center here in San Jose. And I can do a show version just to show you. It's a Nexus 9000V running as a virtual machine pretty much on an ESXi infrastructure. Um, if you don't have access to one, you can also use the Sandbox. There's gonna be a link to our NX OS Sandbox environment at the end of the presentation. So if you, you can run this on Vagrant, on VMware Player, you name it, ESXi, KVM, Vag uh, on any of these virtualizing sys uh, virtualization systems, or you can use the uh, DevNet Sandbox for free, pretty much. All you have to be is a DevNet member. I'm sure most of you guys know about the Sandbox already. So quick note, we do have a Nexus based sandbox out there that you can take advantage of. Um, I'm using this just because uh, I have the version that I need. So version 9.23, which is the latest one. Um, I don't have any features enabled as of yet. 
And to enable NXSDK, it runs as a feature. So you actually would have to do feature NXSDK. And that brings up your NXSDK, right? So now you can start building your RPMs, copy them to your boot flash, adding them, installing them on the switch and start running them. So, but you need to have feature NXSDK um, enabled first. Let's enable also SCP server because we will copy our RPM, right? We will develop it in our Docker development environment and then we will copy it to our switch and install it. So we're gonna do that through SCP. And let's also enable, enable Bash shell and this is giving you access to the actual Linux instance running the switch. And we're gonna have a look at that um, we're just going to do a yum install to see that our package, once we install it, it shows up over there uh, running in our Linux instance. All right, so these are the three features I wanted to enable. First and foremost, let me do a copy, run, start, BDC all. Make sure this is safe. And the use case for us today is to develop two commands, two new commands, brand new commands, show port bandwidth utilization, and then a show command, and then also a configuration command, right? So for the configuration command, we'd like to be able to change the threshold for the bandwidth utilization on either all the ports on a specific port so that when the threshold is reached, a syslog message is generated, right? So our use case, two commands, show command that will show the port bandwidth um, utilization either for a specific port or for for all ports and also a configuration command with which we will like to set the threshold for that bandwidth utilization on the port so if that threshold is surpassed a syslog command is generated automatically for us so that is the use case uh let's go to the code so the code um already have it here this is part of the nxsdk um, repo that i was telling you about the link i'll have it in the presentation at the end we can also have a look at it here if you search in your favorite uh, search engine cisco nxsdk the first link it usually is going to point you to this so what I've done is I've cloned locally on my laptop this repo and I'm looking at the examples folder at one of the applications in there, um, the one that's for the port bandwidth utilization, right? So that's all I'm doing so far. I open it up in Visual Studio Code and let's go and have a look at it uh, step by step what's happening with, the, uh, with this code. So this is how it will look, show port bandwidth monitor, port bandwidth utilization, the output, we want it to look like this. So this is the end goal of our feature creation. We want to have this available to us and we also have want to be able to generate syslog messages uh, whenever the threshold, that configuration threshold is surpassed. So first we begin with importing, of course, all the libraries we're gonna use in our code. The most important one, of course, is the nxsdk.py. This is the library that gives you the SDK functionality in Python, right? So there's also a library that you would uh, import in C++ or Go. Also Go with version 9.2.1, uh, forgot to tell you guys. Also Go is supported. So Python, C++, and Go are supported as programming languages uh, with, with the SDK. So I'm importing the SDK right here and I'm gonna use the SDK instance, the object and all the methods to create my new command like we've seen in the presentation. But before we go there, first um, I'm defining a print port bandwidth function. So what's gonna happen in this piece of code is that at the end of the day, I'm gonna use the CLI to get information of all the ports, right? So I'm gonna do a show interface on the CLI, get 
all the uh, the ports in JSON format. You can specify, uh, hey, I want the output of my show interface command in JSON. I'm going to parse that information. I'm going to extract only specific fields that I'm interested in to compute my port bandwidth utilization, right? So that's what I'm going to do. So with this function, I'm getting the result from my show interface command and I'm extracting only the interface, um, the internet bandwidth, TX rate, so the transmit rate, uh, receive rate, transmit bits and receive bits on that interface. For each key in result that will go, will parse um, every port in my show interface command and will extract only the seven values because I will use these values um, in my code and to compute the bandwidth utilization for each port. So I'm computing that actually right here. So if I have, if that uh, Ethernet bandwidth uh, variable actually exists, right? So I have that value exists, I'm computing the transmit percentage and the receive percentage band utilization on that port, right? That's why I'm using it. Um, and here I'm generating that syslog command, hey, port bandwidth utilization on that port is higher than the threshold, um, generate the syslog command, right? So that I know my monitoring solutions, whatever I'm using that, they get this and then I can get notified with WebEx Teams, with chat ops, we can open a ticket with ServiceNow, Remedy or whatever um, ticketing system you integrate with. So there's many use cases for this uh, specific syslog. Once I generate that, um, I'm also uh, returning the print string for show output. So this is getting that information, organizing it, extracting only um, the seven fields I'm interested in, computing the bandwidth utilization, and then generating the syslog message. Next, I'm defining a timer thread function called timer thread. So this is a thread function that will run every 60 seconds and it's basically to poll and calculate the port bandwidth utilization at regular intervals. In this case, 60 seconds every minute. And in case the bandwidth um, surpasses the threshold that I defined, then it generates that syslog message, right? So it's running as a thread every 60 seconds. Next, we're defining the handler function, your callback, right? So this is, Whenever the user presses enter, this is the class uh, the, that we're extending. So NX command handler, in this case, we're extending that class and we're defining um, a new pi command handler command uh, class. And, sorry, and, and in there, we have our new function that is actually going to look for show port band utilization command. So this is the command, first of all, the show command that I'm going to monitor for with my new command. So if this is detected uh, in the CLI, then what you need to do? If a port is specified, then get that specific port and do show interface only that port, right? I'm interested in only in that port. If no port is specified, then I'm gonna get show interface on all the ports and the output I'm gonna to want to be JSON because it's much easier to parse. It's basically a dictionary in Python. It's much easier to parse JSON than CLI output. So you have that option here or XML, but uh, JSON is usually uh, easier to parse. Um, then I'm printing port bandwidth threshold limit for that interface has been surpassed. Um, I'm loading up the results of my show interface command in JSON response. And for each key in JSON response, I'm using the function that I defined above, print port bandwidth, right? That was the, far, the first function I defined. That's the one where I'm extracting the seven fields and I'm computing the bandwidth and I'm generating the syslog. So I'm using that here, right, for each key in the JSON uh, result. Uh, in this case, if it's a dictionary, then it means 
it's been no port has been specified so it's all the ports if uh, it's not a dictionary your key then it means it's only one port and just display the information for that specific port so that's for my show command right that's how I'm dealing with it that's how I'm creating my actual command uh, for my configuration command port bandwidth threshold is that's my configuration command so in case the user issues that command if I'm doing a no in front of it then I'm gonna reset it to 50% that's by default the value that the threshold is set at right so 50% if you change it with port bandwidth threshold 10% 20 90 percent then if i do a no port bandwidth threshold it will revert back to the default of 50 else um, if i'm not doing a no so if i'm doing the actual command port bandwidth threshold then i'm getting the value and i'm storing that value in port threshold right sdk thread this is another thread function in which I'm performing all the SDK related initializations, right? So here is where I'm connecting back. I'm in instantiating um, the SDK object that we're talking about. So this is where I'm creating a, uh, an XSDK instance. And this is where I'm gonna use all the methods that are available with that object. So they create my function, I create my hook into the actual um, Nexus operating system. So in here, first of all, I create that new instance of SDK, right? So I'm using the NX SDK get SDK instance method of that. And if I'm not able to get an SDK instance, I just return my application cannot run because I'm not able to get that hook into the um, infrastructure APIs, right? Running on Nexus. If everything went well, then the SDK object has, of course, a bunch of methods. Here, I'm just setting the app description, um, um, instantiating a get tracer for my Sysla commands, commands, right? So my TM uh, SG variable that uh, generate events uh, would actually generate syslogs. Right here, actually, to log uh, some trace events. Dot event you would have started service whenever your application uh, starts, a syslog message will get generated that your service has started. Um, then here I'm getting a get CLI parser. So this is where I'm creating the hook into the actual CLI. So with the SDK up here, I created my hook into the um, SDK, into the infrastructure APIs. And here is where I'm getting a CLI parser hook into the actual CLI so that I can, after that, instantiate my new commands. So NX command, uh, new show command, we'll call it show port bandit util. Uh, this is how I'm referencing this command within my code, but the actually how the user will see it is going to be like this port bandit utilization, right? So for me, when I reference this command in my code, and you guys have seen this actually up here, right? So this is how I'm referencing the command in my code, but the user at the CLI will actually see port bandwidth utilization, and then you have the option of specifying the port or the threshold option to see if uh, ports have uh, hit the threshold value. The update keyword, so here for port, whenever you do question mark, if you guys remember, so you do port question mark, or you do show PB um, W monitor question mark, the first thing that will show up will be port, right? And it will be port information. You write port, you do question mark. So the keyword next will be bandwidth. So that's the port bandwidth information that you're looking for, uh, then utilization. So this is actually the, the help information that the user sees when they do question mark. Port is actually a parameter, so it's not a keyword. You, it, can have, uh, it can have an actual value, so you can pass it in as a, as a parameter. And what's nice is that you can specify the P interface here. 
uh, option with annex SDK PY. So that's the method that's available to actually have the SDK make sure that the user passes in an interface and not gibberish, right? So you can put in there as blah, blah, blah um, as a port, but you don't actually have to look for that and make sure that the user inputs this by just passing in the P interface I'm making sure that the, X, the SDK in the backend makes sure and verifies that the user passes in a port as a parameter to my command. So that's always nice because if not, you would have to make sure that it's, oh, it's an Ethernet port, oh, it's zero is not a value that exists. So it, it will get much more complicated. So it's nice to have that, uh, that option. And keyword hit threshold at the end is display all ports that exceeded the threshold, right? You can specify that option too at the end as a keyword. So that's for my show command. That's how I'm defining it. Then for my config command, I have port bandwidth threshold command. This is how I'm referencing it in my code again. And this is how the user will see it in configuration mode. So I have the config terminal, and then I can do port uh, PBW monitor port bandwidth threshold and change that 50% threshold to 10, 20, 100%, 90%, whatever it is. And we'll see later, uh, actually right here, we'll check that the, uh, the user inputs a value between one and 100 and not like minus 10, not a value that doesn't make sense. So we'll make sure with this, that the threshold is within the one and 100 limit. We don't want them to put in a number that really doesn't make any sense. Um, I'm handing the command callback handler right here, right? So I created a new class, I'm extending it, I'm creating a new instance of that class. And then with uh, this, uh, I'm actually adding that, instan that instantiation of the class I created above to my uh, CLI thread, uh, add to parse three. It's actually adding your command to the parse tree, the CLI tree, all right? So that the user, when they do a show question mark, they can actually see your command. Um, then I'm starting the event loop, uh, service quitting. I'm just generating when I'm quitting the my application, I'm generating a syslog message and a graceful exit destroy at the end. Initializing the global variables here, so port threshold by default 50%. And then I've defined all my functions, all my threads, and here is actually when I'm starting that those threads, right? So I here, here I have just the definition of the SDK thread. This is connecting to the SDK. And then there's also the timer SDK, which is timer thread. Right, so I've defined this as functions, and at the end, I'm actually starting them and I'm initializing those uh, threads. So I'm starting the SDK thread first, I'm establishing the connection to the SDK, and then I'm starting my timer thread. Doesn't really make sense to start one the timer thread before because they don't have the connection to the SDK, so it's not really going to work. So, order here is important you want to start first your SDK, make the connection, and then that thread, and then start your timer thread for monitoring every 60 seconds. Uh, timer thread start, and SDK thread join, and that's pretty much it. So quick recap, port <clears throat> my function at the beginning, right? Fairly straightforward, print port bandwidth, extracts that show interface information, massages it, computes the bandwidth utilization, displays it to the user. My timer thread runs every 60 seconds uh, and generates syslog messages whenever the threshold is surpassed, goes over. Uh, my pi command handler is my callback function. In this case, I'm extending the NX, com NX command handler class. So I'm extending it, I'm adding new functionality to that class. And I'm doing that by defining a new function, post uh, CLICB, with my two options, show command and config command. Here, I'm doing my hooks into the SDK. So SDK thread, this is the thread that's gonna instantiate an SDK instance, connecting it, getting a hook into my CLI parser, get CLI parser, 
and here is where I'm defining them. Uh, both of them starting making the connection between the um, class and the actual handler, right? So that class goes into the handler function so that the, when the user presses enter, this callback gets called. Um, and then I'm starting both threads and that's pretty much it, right? So once you have this, you've developed your Python, C++, Go application, you have, you're happy with it, um, you can actually use the Docker image that we have set up for you. So you can find the Docker image, a link to it on that GitHub repo with NXSDK. I have it running over here. So if I do Docker PS, I can see it's running Docker Cisco, NXSDK, I have the latest version, 175. And I'm right here, I'm in the Docker uh, image that is running, I'm on the bash shell on it. And I'm in the NXSDK folder. So let me just show you examples. Uh, Python, we have examples for you in Go, C++, and here I have my PBW monitor function, the one we've had a look at, right? So if I do a cat, that pretty much the same thing, uh, same code that we've had a look at. So we have our application. And what we have with the SDK and with this Docker image, we have a utility, a Python script that generates actually RPMs for you uh, just by specifying the location, the source and the destination of uh, your Go, C++ or Python application. So if I do scripts RPM gen, and I specify a source examples Python, um, too few arguments, let me see, what am I missing? Oh yes, I actually have to specify which PBW monitor, that's how we want to call our application, is source, is examples, Python, and we want the destination to have the same name. All right, so a spec file has been created and an RPM file has been created in NXSDK RPM RPMs. And this is the RPM that the RPM gen utility has created for us, right? So now I can go and copy this RPM file to my switch. So let me change directory RPMs. I see here has been actually created today is the latest version 175 of the SDK. So now if I have, if I want to copy it to the switch, let me show you first of all that we don't have it here. So if I do did a bull flash, it's not there, right? So let me actually go ahead and copy this <clears throat> to admin at 128.107.760. All right, copied. So now if I go back to my switch and I do a dear boot flash, I actually should see it right here. My RPM has been copied and to install it, I have to do install add boot flash and specify the name of the RPM. So at this point, the RPM gets added to an XOS. I can do a show install inactive. The RPM has been added, but it's not been activated, right? So I have inactive packages right here, PBW monitor um, as an inactive package. Let me do install activate this it's going to take a couple of seconds here to activate it and then complete it successfully so now if i do show question mark let's make it a bit easier p 
it still doesn't show up there because next step is I have to tell NX SDK about it. All right, so I have to do NX SDK service name and do PBW monitor and this uh, show a known error, but I think it worked. PBW monitor, there, there we go, port bandwidth utilization question mark and here I can specify a specific port or I can do heat threshold let's just do make sure it works port bandwidth utilization and there we go it's a lab virtual instance so there's not going to be much traffic happening on it but this is how our show command looks like right and then in config mode I can also do port bandwidth threshold, right? I can specify default is 50%, can specify my 10% threshold. And then whenever this 10% threshold is surpassed, a syslog message gets generated. So I have all my threads running. I have my command, my show command is there. Um, I have statistics about it. So what's nice is that NXSDK also gives you event history here, me uh, memory statistics, state. So you can actually start troubleshooting. And if I do event history, events, it's probably gonna show you start the service. So it's that syslog message that service has started and it's running. I can also have a look at it with run bash, sudo. So here, if I do yum installed grab installed list uh, install, um, hmm. let me see, I forgot this history yum, yum list. And I can see my app as being installed. Let me just grab for it. Third party is installed, runs actually on the Linux um, as a YAM package, right? As a RPM package with YAM install. So we know it's running. So now if I do a reboot or everything, my app will still be running because it's officially installed in there. And that was pretty much all I had. Um, let's go back to the presentation. I showed you guys the link. So if you search for NX SDK, like I said, with your favorite search engine, the first thing uh, will pop up is this. You have here examples, scripts, you have the RPM gen utility, which is very nice because you can generate the RPMs with it. Uh, documentation here on how to use it, uh, where how to pull your Docker, make sure you, you, you pull the latest one, how you run it. Um, you can create this environment your own, so your, your NX SDK environment. Just we explain you here if you want to do that. Uh, if you want to have your own Linux uh, version of this environment, you can develop it, uh, deploy it your own. You, we, we have all the steps in here. We've gone over Cisco data center networks, the Nexus family of switches. We've seen we can run them with ACI, um, eVPN, BGP, um, VXLAN, eVPN, BGP settings, or a standalone. We went over extending NXOS. We had a quick look at guest shell, Docker, and then NX SDK. We've seen how you can develop your own shell commands, configuration commands, uh, very straightforward to get started with. There's a bunch of uh, examples in there. Um, you can just build on top of them, um, just have fun. Like you've seen here, the steps are pretty easy uh, to get started with. Um, resource list, open NXOS on DevNet, developer.6.com slash NXOS. There's where everything NXOS starts from DevNet. A lot of content in there, documentation for the APIs, documentation for NX SDK, uh, additional NX SDK documentation links in there. Docker on XSDK, uh, learning labs, 
uh, like we've said, Hank has set up actually a code exchange challenge. So we do have code exchange is our um, one central repo uh, or platform where we store all the GitHub uh, content that Hank, myself, all the DevNet team, our community is contributing to. So if you have a cool project that uh, you would like to share with the community, Code Exchange is your answer. Go submit it over there. And uh, we already have hundreds, if not probably almost thousands now of uh, GitHub repos uh, with applications for all Cisco platforms and not only Ansible playbooks is everything in there. So the challenge for this webinar is for you to build a show command highlighting details that matter to you, right? So we've seen in this case, we've went over show port bandwidth utilization. If you like to do a different show command, or you can just modify this slightly, right? And add a new feature, a new field in there, or however you see fit. But we would love to see you build your own show command, right? You can just take this, what we've went through today, make a small modification and submit it, or whatever you want, right? But Hank and myself would love if you guys could do this. It's gonna be very beneficial, I think, to you to see how easy it is to get started. So that the code exchange piece, uh, looking for more dev, net DevOps, net DevOps on DevNet, all the links here, net DevOps Live. We have blogs, um, programmability basic video course. It's a very cool video that Hank, video series that Hank has come up with uh, to get you started with network programmability. If you don't have, if you don't know what Python is, if you don't know what's a REST API, very nice introduction into uh, net DevOps and network programmability. You have more questions, I'm on Twitter. Please follow me at AI DevNet. Uh, direct message me over there. I monitor that fairly religiously. So um, uh, on GitHub, I have my GitHub link in there. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all of it. Thanks, thanks a bunch for joining this penultimate talk. I have the chance of using penultimate in real life, not only in an MP MPLS setting. Hank, take it away. Excellent. Thanks so much, Adrian, for the session today. Um, one of the things we set out when we started to plan for season two was to offer some more advanced content, and this clearly falls into that bucket. Um, the ability to create your own network features using uh, the, pipe, the NX SDK and, and offer those is kind of showing the, the future and where network automation developers can kind of take us to. And even if you're not ready to do those yet, it shows the tooling and the things that are, will be available for you when you are. As mentioned, please join us next week for the final episode in season two of NetDevOps Live, where we're going to do a deep dive into container networking. With that, thanks everybody and have a great week. Talk to you soon. Yeah.